Hi guys, welcome back for another Full Joy Mom video. In today's video, I had to position myself in the sun because it's spring here and it's a little bit chilly still. The sun feels amazing, so I know that's like breaking shadow YouTube recording rules, but I don't really care because I'm not doing this video uh, with some big agenda and a list and a ton of Bible verses and 10 step plans. I have coffee and I just want to hang out and honestly talk with you about supernatural birth. Talk with you about birth. Let's pretend like we're on the playground, my kids are all distracted right now, and we're having coffee and enjoying talking about this awesome topic of supernatural birth. So if you want to do that with me, please join me. Stick around. Well, if you are new here, hi, my name is Dawn Marie, and quick introduction, if you've never seen any of my videos before, I am a mom with four kids, I've been married for almost 15 years now, and I had two natural births, and then two supernatural births, and I have videos about those. I have the links below for you to check them out if you want. Testimonies of God's goodness. Um, that was years ago that I put those videos out. And I have absolutely loved getting to talk with so many of you um, about what your story was. You know, it has blessed me so, so much to hear all of the stories. Stories that you know, weren't what you thought that they were going to be. Stories where God's grace was there after the fact to come and restore and to heal. Um, you know, I just am very grateful for the level of honesty and transparency that you have had with me throughout the years. And so I just want to sit down and talk and talk about some more supernatural birth related issues, subjects, topics, whatever. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I, what else should I say about myself if you've never like seen me before? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure you'll, yeah, who knows? Hi, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um, let's see. So one thing that has really stuck out to me when talking um, with many of you about your supernatural birth stories um, is that we can't let the little foxes spoil the vine. You know, I think it's so amazing that supernatural birth is, is this topic that when I first started having these thoughts of, oh my goodness, I think that God intended birth to be pain-free. I think that's the way it was in the garden. And looking at my Bible and recognizing these things, I would search it up on YouTube and there was nothing, like nothing existed. The Supernatural Childbirth book was the only resource I found late into my third pregnancy, which was my first supernatural birth. And it was it's just so impressive to look now. So many of you have hopped on and shared your testimonies. I've heard from so many of you. There's other resources popping up. You know, there is tons of really good information out there about supernatural birth, and it makes me so excited. Um, but from feedback that I hear from some of you guys, I have sort of have some things in my mind that I'm like, wow, we need to address these issues to make sure that, you know, that thief who's here to steal, kill, and destroy, does that come and take that abundant life from you? This little fox that spoils the vine, it's not really little, but it's just these tiny thoughts that creep in of fear. And I think one of them is this concept that if you start to learn about natural birth um, from sources that are not necessarily like in promotion of supernatural birth that there is going to be something that is fear related that's going to come on you and then you're not going to be able to have the faith for that supernatural birth i would say er, to that like no way i think that that is something that helped me in my supernatural birth journey was that number one i had already had babies i was convinced that my body could do this i 
what I'm a nurse um, and I had done lots of natural birth research because super means above, right? Supernatural. We're going above what is natural, but you still have to, like natural is occurring, right? Learn about how awesome, fearfully and wonderfully your body has been made. Find resources that tell you here's how to achieve a natural birth. You know, maybe there are resources out there that now mix the two and that would be awesome, but you need to have first confidence in how God created your body, that your body can actually have a child naturally. If you're going at this for the first time um, and you don't even have the foundation laid that your body can have a baby naturally, um, then there's, there's like a step that's missing there, right? You need to understand how your body was created, especially so that when you're in the thick of it, when you're in labor, there's not things happening to your body that are causing you to be fearful because you don't understand what is happening. You're unsure of the natural birth process. Therefore, these things are causing unnecessary fear when that's in reality how it's actually supposed to go. So I would highly recommend to just research some natural birth stuff. I, my things, my first child is nine. So I'm like, I don't have resources right now. They're like a decade old. So if you do, if you're a mom that has researched this out and found some really great um, natural birth resources, please share below. I would love to hear about them. And that'll be so helpful for everyone that's watching these videos. Um, because I'm of course not advocating for you to go and fill up on really traumatic birth stories. I think that that's another way that the, you know, that the fox can spoil the vine, like these tiny little thought processes. You hear about someone's birth story um, or you hear about, you know, their th how things went wrong and then now you're taking that fear on. So I think that don't shy away from getting information about natural birth, but also certainly don't fill up on all the fear-based things. But the bottom line is that your faith trumps fear when you put it to practice, when you choose to have faith in God. So if you do, maybe you have a traumatic birth story yourself that you're still working on healing from, and now you're finding yourself in another pregnancy and you're wanting to believe God again. Take those things before the Lord and get really raw with him and he will meet you there with healing. He will. He will absolutely meet you there with healing. You just have to muster up that courage to face those really hard, painful, hurtful feelings, emotions, and realities. Um, but God will come and he will meet you there. So let's see what else to talk about with birth. Oh, another thing that's really interesting is like, yes, there is this awesome trend of home birth and I am a mom that has had two home births, but maybe you live in a state where that's not possible. Who cares? Like Jackie in her book, she, I was amazed by how she had her testimonies and in the hospital. I think that's awesome. And at first I was just like, well, I don't know how you could accomplish a supernatural birth in a hospital. But then when I look back at my own birth story, so my first child was born in a hospital. Um, it was a smaller hospital. It was a women's hospital. Um, and then my second was born in a midwife center. And honestly, my first experience as far as comparing hospital versus midwife was way better in the hospital than it was in the midwife center. I had, I had a terrible midwife center experience. Um, so if I was faced with like not having home birth as an option and I only had to choose between like a hospital and a midwife center, I would honestly probably choose a hospital again. I had a great experience. I had a really supportive staff. So, you know, yes, you hear all these things, um, like these horror stories about it, but that's not always the case. And you have to remember that God knows the end from the beginning. So no matter what you're looking at, whatever kind of choices you're making, he knows what is gonna be best for you, for your husband, for this child. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows what you're gonna come up against. Um, and another side note is that you can hear the truth or the facts, I should say, of what that doctor is saying and receive those with love and grace just because you're believing for a supernatural birth, don't forget that you still are a light carrier. You have Jesus on the inside of you and you are to show forth his glory wherever you go. So this is about a relationship with him. This is about that connection with him and don't get so focused on your story that you're like, you know, doctor, I've, I mean, I've heard, I've, I've, I've heard stories from women, friends, people who it's like, they were believing for that supernatural birth. And that here's this 
this doctor telling them something contrary to the word of God and they're like yelling at them to get out of the room. Now listen, like birth is crazy, right? So like I'm not really judging that hard. I'm just saying have that in your head that you can hear what they say and be polite and take it, but you don't have to receive it as the truth that you're going to stand with. I'll give you an example. My midwife um, was letting me know after my fourth child that my diastasis recti and my abdominal hernia were so bad. Um, she did it in a gracious way, but she was basically like, you can't have any more kids um, because your stomach is so bad. Like it was so bad. I have a video about that. I'll link it below because God healed me. The end is that God healed me. So bottom line is that she lets me know, Hey, you need this surgery to repair it, but doctors won't do the surgery to repair it until you say you're done with kids, but you can't have any more kids because your body is not going to support having another pregnancy. Um, I'm standing here in a body that is my stomach perfect. No, no, it's not. <laughs> Uh, I have four kids in five years, but I don't have diastasis recti anymore and I don't have an abdominal hernia and God supernaturally healed those. And in that moment when she was telling me, I was grateful for that because now I have vocabulary uh, to pray with and against. And now I know what needs to happen in my body um, so that I can believe God to heal it. And it was really amazing because he it was two separate ways, like two separate instances in which he healed my body. First it was, it was the DI and then it was the abdominal hernia. And in my mind, I was taking communion for the first and I was just had this moment of revelation and it was like I was taking communion with the blood of Jesus, knowing it was going through my whole body healing me. It was different than before because I've taken communion a lot, right? But my mind was picturing the Holy Spirit sewing my abs back together, um, which like it's interesting because, you know, I think we can just get so caught up in the faith stuff that we forget you have to apply natural wisdom. If I was doing the correct kind of abdominal exercises in between all of my children to properly care for my body, then my diastasis recti probably wouldn't have been that bad. Uh, actually, I know it wouldn't have been that bad, but I was very much like, oh, it's fine, just sacrifice my body for babies, it doesn't matter, I don't really care, I'm not gonna be like that. Um, and that was way too extreme. You know, I'm really all about the middle. That's what the Lord has shown me over the last year. I don't wanna be in a ditch on this side of the road. I don't wanna be in a ditch on this side of the road. I just wanna be in, in the middle with him. Um, and with him is what it is about when you are having a supernatural childbirth. There are things to be done. There are verses you can read. There are ways you can renew your mind. There are testimonies to listen to. Um, there are books to read, but at the end of the day, it's honestly about your connection with him. It is about doing this with him, whether there's pain there, whether there's not pain there, whether it goes exactly as you planned, whether it doesn't, whether it's sort of like you planned and sort of not. You know, I've heard all the different types of testimonies and I think the biggest thing is being able to have a solid relationship with him where you can trust him no matter what. And it's not about producing this end result because birth is miraculous and your child being born healthy and you being healthy is, isn't that the end goal that we're after. Um, and you know, if we experience supernatural birth, that's just the cherry on top. Like honestly, if I was to have another kid, I can't, like, I don't know, because I'm not there right now, but I look back on my painful, full pain birth stories with just as much fondness as I do my supernatural birth stories. I was a Christian for all of them. I just didn't know for um, the first two pregnancies that supernatural birth was even a possibility, but Jesus was my rock. So I was there with him and it was amazing, like the power that he has placed inside of a woman's body, that they can literally endure that pain, produce that baby, forget about it instantly, and go on to do it again. Like, it's just amazing. So if you have a story that didn't turn out how you planned and it doesn't feel like this huge testimony, don't let Satan come and whisper more lies to you after the fact. You know, there are, like, I... Okay, I have a hard time talking about this because I, it's like I have so many of you in my head with all your different varying um, scenarios that you have had through birth and like I have a tender heart for all of them and so 
you know, I have ones that are really traumatic in my mind right now, and I have such a heart for you guys. Um, so just hopefully that this is coming across as encouraging and not diminishing the reality of some of your stories, because I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to say that, ask God to help you see the beauty in your story, no matter how crazy it got. Ask him to show you what beautiful moments you can hold on to, what you can learn from, how he can redeem that for you um, and restore that. Um, you know, I have a couple moms in my head who they tried for a supernatural birth the first time. It did not go as planned. It did not go well. Um, it was very hard. And then they built their faith up to do it again. And they have these amazing stories and they talk about how God has healed their heart, how he met them there for that second birth. You know, I have so many amazing stories in my head of moms who it was like, the pain didn't totally go away, but God was with them. Like, I grew up hearing we were created to worship in my Christian circle that I grew up in, right? And so my limited view of worship was standing, singing praise songs to God. And I didn't have this concept that like, we weren't created to sing praise songs to him. We were created to be in fellowship with him. You know, Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And I'm sitting right now uh, in the sun. I can't even see my screen. So hopefully this has been an all right angle for you. And my squinting's not too bad, but I just was going to freeze in the shade. Anyways, um, I'm sitting in my spot at my current house. We're getting ready to move. I'm going to have to develop a new spot. But this is the spot where I practice the presence of the Lord, where I just come and I get with him and I fellowship with him. And, you know, for my first supernatural birth, that was really how I came to realize that I could have a supernatural birth. And that was the preparation I did was just being with him. And then even more so with my second, if you listen to that story and I talk about the worship song that my daughter was born to, we are just listening to that same CD uh, the other day, actually yesterday in the living room, I was telling my sister-in-law just how fond um, we, I think about that season of life and those particular worship songs because it was where I first learned to really experience the overwhelming presence of the Lord um, while I just worshiped and meditated on Him. And it was building that skill with a whole bunch of kids and babies around me. You know, I would one moment be singing, and in his presence and another moment I would be back to reality helping a child with something they need and that was how I started my day for a year or two at least maybe actually more and um, because that was the capacity that I had with the ages my kids were and I love that I love that so much you know I it's almost like a muscle that I grew or a skill set that I honed where now no matter where I am I can pause and just be in his presence instantly and it was that ability or skill that I used when I was in labor with my fourth and had that amazing birth story. So I guess what I'm saying through all of this is don't get so caught up in the, the renewing of your mind, the scriptures you're to read, the, the you know person's 10 steps of how to have your supernatural birth. Don't get so caught up in the tasks of it that you forget to sit at his feet and you forget that it's about a personal relationship with him. And just as many humans and women and babies there on the planet, that's how many birth stories there are going to be. Oh my goodness, I'm curious if I have coffee all over myself. I just removed my hand and I've got coffee all over the bottom. I'm such a hand talker that I think possibly you've been watching me slosh my coffee all over the place. But anyways, I just paused because my daughter came out and I love talking about birth with you guys. You know, I pray that there are people in your life, if you've already experienced supernatural birth, that you get to share your story with because that is something that I've heard from moms is after the fact. You know, they've got this awesome story to tell, but it feels like no one can relate to them and it feels like there isn't anyone to tell the story to or maybe they're trying to share it with family and they just don't get it. Maybe this is, you know, maybe the Lord's prompting you right now as you're listening, like, I think I need to get on here and share my story do it. There's no right or wrong way to have a baby. There's no right or wrong way to have a supernatural birth. Any level of, if God was with you in your birth room, you have a story to tell. And if you're a Christian and you have, you're a child of God, then he was there with you because he's never going to leave you or forsake you. So tell your story. You know, a lot of times we think it's only the good stories that are going to make impact on people, but your story 
if it doesn't feel like some awesome victory, that that could be just what someone needs to hear. And you could be the light carrier to them that's going to bring restoration, that God's going to use to put hope back inside of them. Um, so yeah, do if, if that's for you, that's for you. But anyways, you know, another thing I've heard from you guys a lot is that there's not support around you in your pursuit of the supernatural birth and people are questioning and people are, you know, thinking you're crazy and all these things. I think that there's a time and a place to make your declarations and to say, this is what we're believing God for. Um, and then there's a time and a place for silence and for not needing to have an answer to everyone's questions and not needing to let everyone know what's happening and what's going on. That's okay. You know, you might be in a situation where you don't even feel like you have a spouse that's on board. Well, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is your helper, that God is your source. And so even if it feels like no one around you is supporting you, you can do this because God is with you. And if God is for you, then nothing can stand against you. So I would just encourage you that if it feels like there's that lack of support there, just, just go to the Holy Spirit and know that he can make up for any lack that is in your life. Um, and pray and ask God to bring you those revelations and that comfort and that support for you to be able to stand, for you to be able to know that he is good and that this is a possibility for you to have a baby, not experiencing pain. But just remember, it's about being with him. It's about experiencing his presence. It's about your story is about you with God, not just you showing the testimony of what God has done. Um, there's a time and a place for all of them. You know, I have this really cool story of being in a room full of women at a Bible study. And I'm okay, okay, this is really fun actually. Now I'm getting super excited as I'm remembering all the details because the Holy Spirit just reminded me of it. So I'm at a Bible study, I'm newer to the church, I'm newer to the Bible study, great women. And one of the girls, there's two or three people pregnant, and the one mom says, I gotta tell you guys this, this is just so crazy. I have a fear of hospitals, um, so I have, I have a hard time having my kids. This is my second birth, and the first one went okay, but I'm really fearful of hospitals, so it's really hard for me. And I was been praying and asking God to help me with that, and he sent me this, well no, she didn't say it like that, she just said, I had a dream that I had a baby and it didn't even hurt. Okay, like this, I'm inside this Bible study. There's like seven or 10 of us. I about fell out of my chair, but on the outside, I was just like, just, I'm just there. I'm not saying anything. I've got my, my <laughs> I've got, you know, my, I just smile. I'm just smiling. I'm not saying anything. Inside, I'm literally like, oh my goodness, Holy Spirit, did you hear that? Because that dream was from you, Jesus, wasn't it? No way, this is so cool. And the Holy Spirit's just like, don't say anything. And I'm like, what? Don't say anything. He's like, don't say anything. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This is crazy. And he just kept telling me over and over again, don't say anything. Don't say anything. That, to my mind, is so illogical. That makes no sense. The women, the other women are talking. They're laughing about it. Actually, not in a disrespectful way. They are literally going, oh, that's so funny. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be awesome? And that was the case. And yada yada and but you could tell there was just this there was this wonder in this mother's eyes because she I think you know the Holy Spirit was working on her he was he was he was speaking to her and I think she knew that this dream was more than just something for us to think is funny because wouldn't that be nice if we could have our babies without pain and so I walk out of there and as soon as I get out of the room as soon as I decide to walk in obedience to the Lord I get out of that room and he's like I want you to buy the book this week and give it to her. Buy Supernatural Childbirth and give it to her. And of course, I'm instantly like, oh, that's the best idea ever. I never would have thought about that. You know, his ways and his thoughts are so much higher than ours. Honestly, if your first exposure to Supernatural Childbirth was in a room full of women where there's seven to ten minds that have to grasp this new fact, chances are every woman in that room is not going to be like, oh, rock on. Yeah, sounds good. Let's have babies without pain. That's probably true. You know, it, it, it probably wouldn't have gone over well. And then her first exposure on top of this dream God gave her could have been 
seven to 10 women's negative inputs, but instead, because God is so rich in wisdom, she got to have a first exposure the next week in the hallway. I just said to her, hey, you that last week when you shared that dream, I just, my heart left on the inside of me because I've had two babies and I actually didn't have any pain. And I just told her really quickly what God had showed me in the word and how I had found this book. And I was like, the Lord told me to buy this book for you. She took the book. Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much. Tucked it in her purse. And that was that. Um, that I did not continue going to that church. It was like a short period of time. Um, but she, I had heard from her that she had read the book and was so excited and everything was awesome. And so I just think that's amazing that God gave me that chance to pour into another mom like that. So, you know, maybe if you're feeling like there's not anyone in your immediate vicinity to tell that story to, you get that story for life, okay? Like that's not going anywhere. And so I just pray and ask God to bring people in your path that you can share your story with, that you can bless them and it can encourage them, um, you know, and open their eyes too. I love it. I love how much is out there now. It's so amazing. So I hope that this video blessed you. I hope it encouraged you. If you are a pregnant mom, congratulations. If you are believing for a supernatural birth, that is so amazing. Do it with Jesus. I love it. I'm so excited for you. If you have a story to tell, resources, ideas, concepts, whatever, leave them in the comments below. I cannot wait to hear from you. Um, if you are new to the channel and you'd like to subscribe, please do so. I have faith-based content for moms just encouraging you on your walk I'm every week putting out a new video so be sure to hit the subscribe button and it was so great hanging out with you guys love you guys so much may the Lord bless you and keep you until next time